This podcast touches on a common set of feedback, I think, aspiring consultants get when they interview for any of the major firms. And I'm referring to the top three, of course. A common set of feedback we receive from MBAs in particular is that you need or they need to get more experience and then reapply to McKinsey or BCG or whatever it is. And I've seen this across many candidates. I mean, we've got candidates from all over the world, you know, Australia, South Africa, England, uh, Canada, the United States. I'm just naming the large countries here. But I see this quite common for MBA candidates, whereby they're told, okay, you've done well, you are very logical, but you need more experience. And what happens with many of these candidates is that they obviously fall over themselves to join a large company, spend two years at that company, or three years, and then reapply to McKinsey. And I think that this podcast is meant to save you a lot of time, heartache, and hassle, and cost as well. You know, If you get that feedback, I'm pretty sure that the vast majority of candidates are going to try as much as possible to get positions at large companies and get that experience that consulting firms are asking for. And I know this is happening because just based on the emails we're getting about these things, it's a problem. And I wanted to qualify what consulting firms say when they mean you need to get extra experience. Experience does not refer to going to work at General Electric for two or three years and then coming back and telling McKinsey, I have two to three years experience. Will you now interview me and I have the skills you know you want? In fact, you know, I've seen candidates who've done that, working at AMD, Intel, or whatever the company is, and then going back to McKinsey. And, and I'm disappointed because they feel McKinsey has misled them. But I don't think consulting firms are misleading you, but I do think consulting firms need to maybe be a little bit more clear about what they say when they say experience. When the consulting firm says you need to get two to three years experience, they don't care if you've come back after two to three years and have worked at, I don't know, BP or Microsoft. They don't really care. What they're saying is that, you've got to read between the lines here. What they're saying is that typically when someone works at Microsoft or whatever the Fortune 500 company is for two to three years, they gain a certain skill set and body of knowledge that allows them to communicate in a much more I think deeper way and a much more broader way and have a much more deeper set of context around which to answer the question. I'm going to talk about this more in more detail, but I think I need to state this, what I'm actually referring to. Now, for example, you know, we've had a great candidate from Oxford that he was, you know, pretty smart, articulate, but I noticed that when you asked him a question, he could only talk about the things he did in his one man consulting shop. You can ask him a question about anything, productivity, strategy, pricing, and he'd always refer back to what he did in this one-man strategy shop. And you know what? It's not an insult to him. I mean, I'm sure he's proud of what he's done. He's done a pretty good job. He's paid for his studies. You should be proud of what he accomplished. But consulting firms don't really care about pride. They want to make sure that if they put you in front of a client, a client's talking about pricing, you're not just going to refer to this narrow body of knowledge that you generated as a result of your work at a one-man consulting shop across a few client projects. But you will refer to pricing, articles, studies, and anecdotes and examples from anywhere. The consulting firm is hoping that when you, you know, spend two to three years by getting experience, and this is important to so pay attention, the experience allows you to talk in a more mature way about business. Now, here's an interesting thing. You don't need to get two to three years of experience to develop this maturity of speaking. And I can tell you this from my own experience. I didn't spend two to three years or four years or whatever in corporate and learned how to speak the way I do. I mean, I don't want to create a misconception that I speak the way I do because, you know, consulting firms taught me to do this. No, I was always a good speaker. And I'm not, I don't want to take too much credit here, but I think that I decided that. The only way I was going to be able to have conversations with the senior vice presidents and executive vice presidents of the energy company where I worked is to be ridiculously well read on a whole host of topics. So, you know, I was one of those people who would read the Harvard Business Review all the time. You know, I remember once I was talking to the chief operating officer of a Fortune $100 energy company where I worked. And he had come to the R&D facilities to see what it was like, I suppose. And there was this, what they call a brown bag session, whereby some of the senior scientists were presenting what they were working on. I happened to be there and I'm, you know, I don't mind talking to anyone. And he was talking about how, you know, the challenges he is facing and the opportunities by coming across from a construction company to lead this gigantic energy company. 
and I went up to him and I said, you know what, I think you must definitely read this article in the Harvard Business Review, which talks about how this chief operating officer came across. And these are the three biggest issues he faced. And I know you knew, yeah, and I mean, obviously you've got a good team and you know what you're doing, but I think that you'll find it very useful, not to teach you new things, but to also help you understand what other people have gone through in similar roles. And that's an example of whereby I didn't work in a role that gave me that skill set, but I was just well-read. And even today, I'm extremely well-read. I read Bloomberg basically hourly. I'll check the headlines. Same with New York Times, same with Washington Post, same with the Wall Street Journal. I mean, I keep up to speed. Even the, the Harvard Business Review, I think the quality of insights is far deeper than any of the other publications. I read it regularly to make sure that I'm able to draw on these rich contexts and talk about it. I mean, yesterday I was in South Korea and I was talking to a very large electronics company, to the chief financial officer, and I don't know anything about electronics. I mean, I'm not an electronics guy. I didn't grow up in that side of the business in consulting. But I'm so well read that I could very clearly explain to him how Samsung allocates investments for its different country units because I read that article by two Accenture partners in the Harvard Business Review six years ago. I think it was six years ago, but I remember it very clearly. I can even draw those little charts that appeared in the article. So I don't claim to be an expert. I say that, you know what? This is the way I know Samsung is doing it, and you know this is where I know it from. But my job is not to repeat what's there, but to take what I've read and to show him the impact. And I don't have experience there, but I can create or replicate the knowledge that comes from the experience. And when you get this feedback that says, you know, you don't have experience, think very carefully about what it is you need to generate from the act of getting experience and think to yourself if you need to go work for a company to gain that knowledge. If you are an aspiring consultant, this will come out. You know, I can honestly tell you right now, the best people I ever hired in my entire life, one was an, he was went to some British university and the other one was a Wharton graduate and the other one was a Stanford graduate actually. They were the guys who could hold a conversation about anything with me. You know, I'd be talking about aviation and fuel costs, and they'll be pulling out pieces of knowledge they read everywhere and crafting this story for me. They wouldn't say something like, well, the economist said this. No, I don't want them to quote the economist. I want them to take the kernel of the idea from the economist, take the kernel of the idea from the Harvard Business Review, stitch together a story and have a conversation with me. So when you get the feedback that you need to get more experience, remember, it's not that they want you to get two years on your resume. They want you to gain a certain knowledge set as a result of working at a Fortune 500 company. And this is the important thing. This is the take out of this podcast. You don't need to work for two to three years to get that. You read Harvard Business Review, and you don't have to read new ones. You can read back issues for about two to three months. Believe me, you'll be able to talk about a subject like you're an expert. And I'm an example of that. I mean, I don't claim to be an expert in everything. I'm a corporate strategist, not even a business unit strategist. I've done very little business unit strategy in my entire life. I'm a corporate strategist. My job when I was a principal engagement manager was to work on projects where companies wanted to know five years, 10 years down the line, what should we do? I did very little projects about helping business units determine their path in relation to the corporate strategy, very little pricing strategies. I've done a few, but I'm not an expert on that. But I can talk about pricing. I can't talk about operations. I can't talk about IT in a lot of detail because I'm well-read on the subjects. And that is what you need to do. You've got to be well-read and you've got to find a way to draw that in. But don't fall for the trap of saying, oh, I have to work for two to three years because McKinsey told me I need experience. You've got to apply the analytical mindset McKinsey wants from you. Ask yourself, why did McKinsey say you need more experience? How did they know that in the interview? right? Obviously, before you went for the interview, they knew you didn't have the experience. So what happened in the interview that made them change their perception of you? Well, there's obviously one thing, you're right. Your resume hasn't changed. It's the fact that what they expected to see in the interview wasn't there. And now they think, okay, look, we brought this guy in. He didn't have the experience. We brought him in and we thought maybe he'll do well, but he didn't do well. So let's send him back out there and let him get some experience. And maybe you know, he'll be better equipped to deal with things. So think very carefully about experience. You don't need to work two to three years to gain what you need to from that experience. I haven't subscribed to the Harvard Business Review. I mean, I would strongly 
recommend a subscription. If you don't have the money to do it, which I think will be a problem for most students, if you Google HBR PDF, a lot of authors publish their PDFs online so you can read a lot of the material. The point is, experience is there to give you some knowledge and you can gain that knowledge without getting the experience. And if you think that doesn't make sense, well, then it's what consultants do, right? I became a principal without working in certain sectors, but I was an expert in those sectors. So that's a consultants are living proof that you can gain that knowledge without actually having the experience. But reading is probably the best bet you can find.